Hi, welcome to the November weather trend forecast. In recent years, this has often been the only month when I can make good use of my snow shovel. Not what it was intended for, of course, but it is very effective for clearing up the leaves. Well, how are things shaping up this year? I'll start by taking a look at the first third of the month. The animation here runs from 00 GMT, November the 5th. And to begin with, it's an unsettled scenario. An Atlantic flow is covering the UK. And as I run it, we see outbreaks of rain pushing across all parts of the country. Showery conditions follow strong winds and then more rain. But then by around Wednesday the 9th, things start to change. High pressure is beginning to build from the south and Atlantic disturbances increasingly being pushed further northwest. That's leading to drier conditions developing in southern and central counties. And just to run this through to its conclusion, the high pressure continues to exert its influence across southern and central counties in particular. The unsettled conditions really becoming restricted to the northwest of the United Kingdom. So an unsettled start then becoming drier as high pressure builds, at least in southern and eastern counties. Temperatures associated with the uh, sequence there, they're going to be fluctuating a little bit early on, close to the average. So Saturday the 5th of November, bonfire night, 12s, 13s in southern and central Britain, cooler there in the north. Overnight lows, they will also be varying, but not particularly cold in the south by any means on most nights, sometimes in double figures. This is just to illustrate. So Wednesday the 9th, 9s or 10s there in England and Wales. Often though, colder in the north, so a greater risk of frost in Scotland. Then at the top end of the uh, range really, as it turns milder, after the first few days, high pressure building up from the south and something of a southwesterly flow developing. It could be, it, there could be some high values around. So Friday the 11th of November, 16s or 17 Celsius in much of the UK, even there in eastern Scotland, it's extremely mild. But I think it's just worth highlighting the fact that if high pressure builds over the UK and calm conditions develop, fog uh, uh, forms through the night and then lingers well into the days, temperatures could be pegged back very significantly. The very mild conditions which are being suggested are not completely assured. A few charts from the Met Office Mogreps G Ensemble. Uh, this one's showing temperatures for York. I've just picked a fairly central location, close to average early on. Then there is that trend towards higher values which I've been discussing up to about 15 Celsius fair on the 7th of November maybe dipping a little in a couple of days which follow it but towards the very end there rising once more but there is a bigger spread showing up there just indicating a decreasing level of certainty in the outcome more possible scenarios. Jumping forwards to the mean service level pressure chart for York, this illustrates things quite nicely. Fairly uh, stable through the first few days, maybe just dipping a little bit, but then from around the 8th, there's a strong rise there in pressure, high pressure becoming more dominant according to this chart. And wind gusts are quite strong around the 8th, so a disturbance moving in from the Atlantic there probably, but then towards the end a lot of runs are showing calmer conditions returning, although there are still a few going for stronger winds. And finally just a rainfall chart, this one is for Birmingham because York was actually quite dry and not very representative of the UK as a whole. It does look like the driest conditions there will be in northeastern England. Uh, but using the Birmingham one as an example, rain on the 5th of November, some more rain there, the 6th and the 7th, and also the 8th and the 9th. That's coinciding with the stronger winds, which the York chart was showing on, on that date. So as I say, quite possibly an active disturbance moving across the UK. But then from around the 9th, it's more or less completely dry, high pressure building. 
all in all, therefore, it's, it's quite a mixed scenario being suggested by the uh, deterministic run, which I used to generate the animation, and the ensemble charts here. Unsettled early on, and then perhaps becoming drier as high pressure builds. Good signal for that in the south and the east, less confidence about how far northwest it will be having an impact. Well, with drier conditions becoming more likely towards the end of the first third of November, how do things develop through the second third? Onto the 16 day ensemble data, so using the GEFS here uh, for London across the top, the air mass temperatures well above the average, a big anomaly there, very, very marked indeed. It dips later on, but even at the end, the thick purple line, the ensemble mean is remaining a little bit above that thick black line, the 30 year norm. The risk of rain, as I've been saying, is looking dry early on. However, the number of spikes there starts to increase later, so the chance of rain probably returning. It doesn't look overly wet, but it casts some question marks about just how much influence high pressure is going to be having through this period, so the second third of November, possibly decreasing as we head later into it. I often use the GEFS and the question comes up, well, why not use ECM ensemble data because it's considered to be a more accurate model. The basic reason is that there's not a great deal of difference between the two, in my experience, when looking this far ahead, and the GEFS data becomes available to me a little bit earlier in the day than the ECM uh, comparable data does. But just to illustrate, here's the ECM ensemble plot for London showing air mass temperatures. Very, very similar to what the GEFS was suggesting. The 30 year norm there also plotted on this chart, but the ensemble mean a long way above it early on, dipping later. The two meter temperature plot for London, so jumping back to data from the GEFS, also shows above average. Early on there, 15, 16, 17 is a lot of the runs, but there is something of a dip occurring as we head towards the 17th of November and beyond it, so cooling down quite possibly, but from that high level early in the period. Going up to Glasgow to see the view in the northwest of the UK. Once again, the air mass temperatures are above that 30 year norm, but the anomaly is not so big, but still significant. And later it is dipping and at the very end there, it's almost exactly in line with the 30 year average. The number of rain spikes across the bottom is a lot more, is a lot greater than on the London chart. It's suggesting a wetter picture there in the northwest of the UK, and it's ongoing the risk of rain through this period. So it ties in quite nicely with what I was talking about, high pressure building up from the south to southeast. It's having more influence in southern and eastern parts of the UK as a result. The Atlantic continuing to batter the northwest at times, bringing those bands of rain across it. The two meter temperature, uh, plot for Glasgow. Again, a similar trend really to the London one. It's downwards, but starting from above the average, perhaps by the end of the period, much, much closer to it. Just worth as well taking a look at the postage stamp plots for uh, 15th of November. They, they are showing effectively the pressure patterns across the North Atlantic region. And the reason I brought this up is because I was a little bit surprised when I looked at it. A significant number of them, more than I was thinking would be the case, are showing deep areas of low pressure to the northwest of the UK with high pressure starting to be eroded southeastwards. Um, as, as a guide, really, if you, if you freeze it perhaps and look at the individual stamps uh, in more detail, the purple shading is indicating areas of low pressure. It's not strictly true, but you can think of it in those terms. And the oranges are showing where the high pressure areas are. And as I say, 
there are quite a lot of the individual runs within the ensemble here which are suggesting that low pressure will be very, very strong to the west to the north, west of the UK and beginning to weaken the influence of the high pressure area. As we head into the final third of November, how do things go from here? Of course, at this range, it's entirely about the direction of, of travel, so cooler or warmer than the norm, drier or wetter. And I'll just bring up the 35-day GEFS plots to try and see whether anything can be pulled out of the data. This one's for London, and it's shown the air mass temperatures. The first thing to draw attention to is earlier on there, the, around the 11th to the 15th of November, there's, there's that big anomaly. So air mass temperatures are a long way above the 30-year average, as I've been discussing. But it's a very clear trend downwards. And through the final third of the month, the ensemble mean, there, the thick purple line, is remaining close to the 30-year average. So cooler or potentially somewhat colder weather is increasingly likely through the final third of November. And of course, perhaps you, the, the conclusion from that is, well, we're heading towards the winter colder weather of, is, is more likely. But the point to emphasize here is that I'm talking about relative to the average. So it's the 30 year norm compared to what the ensemble is suggesting. Earlier, earlier on, the ensemble temperatures, air mass temperatures are way above that 30 year norm, but through the last third of November, they are much closer to it. The comparable plot for Glasgow, very similar. There's that downwards trend in air mass temperatures and then the ensemble mean and most of the runs there, which can be highlighted by the red shading, are close to the average. So once more, the possibility of colder periods in the last third of the month. The mean surface level pressure plot for London, well, does it tie in with what I was just discussing on the postage stamps for high pressure to have a weakening influence through as we go towards the middle of November. Probably because here's the ensemble mean and it's ticking downwards from around the 11th, the 12th of November to reach a low point here around the 21st. But through the last third of the month, the trend is an upwards one once more. High pressure could be starting to build more strongly close to the UK. Also, that would suggest an increasing possibility of colder and often dry weather returning. Does that fit in with the pressure anomaly charts, the weekly aggregate ones? This is for the week beginning Thursday the 17th. The yellow or brown shading is a positive anomaly. The blue shading up to the northwest is a negative anomaly. So higher pressure from the norm or lower pressure from the norm. This is indeed suggesting higher pressure over the UK, but the anomaly is quite weak. It's fairly possible that uh, to begin with, there isn't really an anomaly there at all, and it's just increasing as we head through the week, high pressure starting to reassert itself, perhaps. And that idea would maybe be supported by this chart, which is for the following week. So beginning the 24th of November, a stronger positive anomaly here over the north and the west of the UK, just maybe pointing towards a possibility of high pressure there building northwards or even westwards in the Atlantic. If that happened, it would suggest an increasing chance of colder weather. Is that supported by the weekly aggregate air mass temperature forecast charts? So jumping back to the week beginning Thursday the 17th, red covering all of, the, all of Europe really, the weakest anomaly here over, the, over Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, but everywhere in the UK slightly above that 30 year average. So certainly not cold at the air mass level much, much closer to where temperatures should be than they were earlier in the month. 
Going forwards to the week starting the 24th, so the last week of the month, now the positive anomaly is more or less gone, very, very close to the 30-year average. Once more, it fits in with what I've been discussing, the idea that there is an increasing chance of colder weather relative to the average by the end of the month. Possibly an early start to the winter. And I'll reinforce that message by saying that in the last few days, updates to these GEFS 35-day plots have often been showing slightly colder than average conditions during this period. The latest update, which I've been using in the forecast video today, has been close to the average from a number of them. So, as I say, there is quite a lot of evidence, albeit tentative, to think that we could have some colder periods towards the end of November. So, to summarise that, the first half of the month is unsettled to begin with, but it then turns drier as high pressure builds, particularly in the south and the east. Temperatures, which begin close to the average, rise, and there is a possibility of it becoming very mild for a time. Uncertainty around that, though, because if high pressure builds close enough to the UK, it could be very calm, fog could develop widely at night, and it may linger into the days. If that scenario comes around, then temperatures would be pegged back significantly, something to keep an eye on. The second half of the month may be a trend towards more changeable weather early on, but the highest risk of rain is still in the north and the west. Then high pressure may be building back, drier, as a result, and an increasing risk of fog and frost. That could also suggest a colder end to the month. Will we have an early start to the winter? Not out of a question. The data at this range is very, very tentative. So, to summarise, it's an unsettled start, close to average temperatures, then turn in drier, particularly in the south and the east. Potentially very mild indeed, although that's not certain for the reasons which I discussed. Towards the end of the month, there are some tentative indications of colder conditions. Perhaps that early start to the winter, which has been speculated widely, is not out of the question. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks now. Bye.